Hello, my name is Dan Richardson. Welcome to the Dan Richardson Show. Uh, today we'll be talking about Stargirl Season 1. So Stargirl Season 1 is about uh, a character named Courtney Whitmore. Um, she is Stargirl. She moves um, to, I think, a fictional town called Blue Valley, um, Nebraska. And... You know, she moves there from California, and now she has to adapt to uh, a new life in a small town. Um, something I can kind of relate to, um, she's a sophomore in this, and I uh, did a pretty big move from uh, in between sophomore year and junior year. So, certain bits at the beginning of this story do certainly resonate with me. Um, but yeah, I do like this show. Um, I started it not really knowing what to think, or not really knowing what to expect either. But ultimately, uh, due to some fun characters and good writing, I was able to enjoy this show. Um, there's also good acting. Um, it doesn't necessarily feel CW. Um, that might be because it was a... Uh, DC Universe streaming service show um, first that went over to uh, the CW, but it honestly feels really good. Um, there are some things that are just like, you know, typical teen drama-y, but it's not a bad teen drama. It works. Um, of course, there's the standard girl who sent a sort of racy pick to a guy that she probably shouldn't have. You know, there's that whole trope thing, and they make it kind of work. You know, it's obviously just something that, of course, happens in a show like this, you know, because why wouldn't it? But, yeah, you know, it's... Other than that, this is a fairly strong show. Um, this show, I think, really does the whole... Um, diversity, diversity casting really well. Um, uh, Dr. Midnight and Wildcat are, um, black and I think Hispanic, respectively. Um, and it completely works and it makes sense within the universe of the show. Um, it doesn't feel like studio mandates or just you know, casting actors based off of their skin color, it feels like, you know, oh, this person or this character is right for the job, let's just do it. You know, it's like, um, you know, uh, Danny Glover in Lethal Weapon. Um, Roger Murtaugh was not written as a black man. He was written as just a dude, and they just happened to cast someone black. It, it really works well. Um, the actress who plays Courtney does a good job at being, you know, your typical teenager, but a typical teenager who does have some genuine, like, sense of hope. Um, and it works really well. Um, and of course, Luke Wilson is, you know, does an amazing job here, too, as, uh, Pat Dugan. Um, he is the original star man's, uh... You know, um, sidekick Stripesy, who uh, uh, becomes the uh, pilot of this mecha and becomes Stripe. Um, and it's, you know, rather fun. Um, there is a sort of father daughter dynamic with them, um, despite the fact that they're, you know, step. So there is some animosity at first, but it does work. Um, the bad guys are the Injustice Society of America, and they're basically all about, um, making a sort of new America. Um, America has issues, as we all know, but their sort of ideology is, you know, America could be better if certain things weren't in place. And 
while it's not necessarily super examined in the show what their idea of the American dream is, it is sort of talked about. And, you know, there are some parallels that you can make to certain groups, and I don't know, it might be completely intentional, but I think it's just... If you see Let's Make America Great Again in it, then you see it. Or if you just see that these people are, if you just see these people as sort of corrupt, crazy, or maybe not even corrupt, but just crazy, evil people, then that would work too. Um, Courtney has a, a brilliant line to the main villain, uh, Icicle, who has ice powers. Surprise, surprise. Um... Uh, says to him um, that you can't save America because you have too much hate in your heart. And I I agree with that. Um, there are so many people um, leading us today. This was made in like 2020. But there was, there's, there's so many people out there in Washington who I think just have too much hate for certain groups of people and for the opposite side of the aisle to truly be the, th the thing that America needs. And, you know, America may never get truly what it needs, but the best thing we can do is just make sure that hateful and dishonest people don't make it into the White House or the state, you know, representatives and all that stuff. And, yeah. So, I do agree that we just need some more hopefulness um, this show does certainly have some things going against it. Um, some just typical things that go with the with the genre that it's in. But this also has some really good stuff in it. Um, I can't necessarily think of what my favorite episode is, just at the top of my head. Also, look at this a uh, really cool sort of disc art here. It looks actually, um, you never see, I feel like, um, when Warner Brothers releases um, things live action, they never have the actual people on them. It's normally just a logo or an inanimate object. And this looks actually quite detailed. Um, I believe her name is like Brie Bussinger or something like that. I don't know, she played Bella in Bella and the Bulldogs, which is a Nickelodeon show from like 10 years ago. Um, I can't necessarily think of what uh, my favorite episode is technically, like right now. Um, not really. Uh, I guess maybe the finale? Just the finale and the, op and the pilot, Stargirl. Um, might just be my favorites. But yeah, um, a good first season that gets the ball rolling. And I will see you next time for season two. Or hell, even I might see you tomorrow for season two. So stick around. And remember, God made special. He loves you very much. I hope you have been a very, very nice day. And God bless you all.